All right, we are painting today the, the Demon Seated by Michael Brugel. Um, it's the uh, first painting of the trilogy of uh, three demon paintings. Yeah, I'll be keeping um, during like in the lesson, I'll tell you more about the story and the stuff. Yeah, there are lots of interesting moments uh, regarding this painting. Yeah, but meanwhile, let's start with the sketch. Um, the original size of this painting is huge. It's um, one meter 15 to two meter 12. Yeah, so it's it's uh, hanging in the um, in Moscow in Tretiakov gallery and it takes like huge piece of the wall and yeah, so um, we are recreating it on A4 <laughs> size format. So um, kind of can skip many details, obviously. But of course, let's try to give this mood and this, um, yeah. Um, let's analyze the composition as well. So here in front of you, I have, so this small one is the printed out um, reproduction. Um, maybe my printer got the colors not perfect, yeah. And here is my drawing that I did. It looks darker, yeah, also like the shadow. So let's see, we can, uh, you know, kind of go different ways. Um, very interesting and unusual composition is really this cut it out. Yeah, so you see his head and we don't even see the feet. It's all sticks to the border of the painting. Yes, yeah? so this probably also has some Kind of meaning, trying to show this um, his emotions, his feelings. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it more. Um, so starting sketching, you know, of course, trying to get his figure nice. The body is always the complicated thing you can like do, but it's good to try. So you choose the point where to start with the head. Yeah, so maybe a bit a side of, um, of the um, center. And then we can, yeah, again, we can practice, remember this exercise of measuring. So let's say, for example, I can, with my, uh, so the end of the brush and my finger, I measure, okay, this big is the head. And then I can say how much times it fits in the, in, in the whole painting. So one, that's where the hands are, let's say, starting two, three, let's say four. And this already like helps me a lot to sketch. So then I can say, okay, that's the middle of my page, the middle again. So maybe somewhere here goes my face. Yeah. And, um, and then I can, and then let's say here goes somewhere the, I'll take that marker. So, Somewhere here goes the, his arm, the elbow. If I'm not sure, I can measure again, let's say I can take the same dimension of my head and point it horizontally and say, okay, how much of head fits into my arm? So it's one head and a little piece. So this is what I can do again on my drawing, yeah? Um, it's good to do both. Let's say first you can sketch it. I would first I would mark this dimension by my feeling, but then just to be sure, I can kind of check myself. Yeah. And um, it's normal to, to do this measure exercise. I mean, with time you get like more and more experience in it and uh, you get better. But yeah, one shouldn't be ashamed and go and checking the, the stuff. Yeah? So again, when I measured, you remember I said, so the size of the head came where the hands are starting. So it's again, then I can kind of use this measurement and um, then I know to where my, my hands are going. Yeah? And, yeah, and like this, this is like the way you 
um, you build your if it's a body or if it's you you do the face yeah um like also with any drawing in generally yeah remember also very useful thing to do check the points vertically so here let's say i have this in his hand area this finger and i can check vertically okay it fits like a little bit behind uh, the chin somewhere between the eye and the ear. And that's also a very good um, yeah, um, dimension for me to, let's say, to do. So if somewhere here, maybe ear, then I go vertically down. Yeah, and then I find this, this point. Yeah. And like, so like, if you have time, you can take time and check like if you want all the points, yeah? But of course you also decide generally which are the main ones, you don't do all of them. Yeah, so of course important ones, like the position of ear, this is the classical thing you always check because depending how the head, yeah, you can even like, do the exercise, take a look in the mirror. And um, if, um, and you check your ear, like how it moves. If I put my chin down, the ear go up. If I go there, so the position of my ear, you know, it will be like kind of visually dif different, yeah? So I always, when I'm painting, check it horizontally where my ear like goes towards my face, yeah? and. Like here, the end of the ear now is where my nose is. If I'm looking straight, it's where the lips are. So it's like a little bit classical mistake when you paint and then your ear is like wherever, you know, but um, just doing this simple exercise of checking horizontal, um, yeah, just drawing this horizontal line and then you're sure and yeah, so, and, and of course you do it like, even if you paint flowers, you, you can do the same exercise. Yeah. And there just maybe you want, you don't need to do the um, so much measurements because of course easier and so on. Yeah. But with the body, why it's complicated, why the face, the head of person is considered to be the most complicated because it's all about the millimeters. If I place the eyes one millimeter to the left or to the right, that's already the other person. Yeah, that's already not. Um, and this is the way um, yeah, the portraits are being judged. So not only how uh, creatively, how um, nicely it's painted, but also simply is it similar or it's not similar? Yeah, so um, with flowers, of course, there is no like uh, this. this um... So the eye, the eyes, like you see, it's a huge, big, dark spot. And then we just leave this white um, area. Yeah, um, you can, again, you can check maybe vertical where it fits. It's somewhere like, the... and yeah, now, my, now it's my head is a little bit, to the side. So actually, yeah, I do it with marker, so I can't really erase and move, but um, I would move it like I need to move it a bit down, but okay. I, so I, I leave it now here because if it's the sketch just to explain the, um, the technique, the method. So then yeah, uh, it's normal you, um, when you sketch, you erase a lot. And what else is always useful for sketch? Probably maybe you remember it's um, at the same time when I find already, when I say, okay, my chin is here, I'm sure. What it's always useful, kind of covering straight away the dark spots, just like, like with the pencil, don't have to do it very dark, but just generally uh, already, 
uh, checking with your eyes and marking. Yeah? So this today, um, this painting is a really good exercise of this analyze of uh, light and shadow areas. Because what happens often is that, of course, in, in the shadow areas, there are also some light, some parts are lighter, some are darker. So let's say here you can see it very well, for example, yes. Here I have the arm of the person. We can see his muscles. Yeah, these parts in the light, this side of the arm is in the shadow. Of course, here in the shadow, you can see some other, some parts here is a lighter. And we, we have to show them because if I just put one dark spot, I mean, this will be more boring. So it's, um, it's more professional, of course, you also show. But what's important that later you always come back and you unite all this shadow area. And you remember, this is very important, this exercise but with the halfly closed eyes. So let's say if you have yeah this, this picture printed out, look at it, halfly close your eyes, and then at once, what you see, you see the shadows being united. When I halfly close my eyes, I already don't see these, these light spots inside the shadow. I see the shadow all together. And this is how later should your, your drawing should look like. Yes, yeah, so now, of course, it's early, but later we repeat this exercise when we already have painted. You look at, the, at this original, or you, let's say you have a model in front of you sitting, you halfly close your eyes, then at once you see where the lights are, you see all the united shadows, and without changing your eyes, you move to your painting, and it should look the same. And when you move to your painting and you see, okay, there is some light jumping out from the shadow, that's where you go and just bravely cover it all together. And uh, yeah, so this shadow, uh, the lights inside the shadow shouldn't be lighter or the same intensity like the areas of light, yeah? So this is kind of, it's kind of practice and understanding and um, yeah. Um, so like there is one very nice expression that I like uh, to, uh, to repeat that's for the art is that actually also now we're not painting, we're not painting a head, we're not painting arm or uh, legs. We're painting relationship between light and shadow. That's, um, yeah, so it kind of, you, you, you watch it uh, this way. Um, but of course, what happens um, with the body that all these shadows, they are not just by occasion there. The, the shadows, they're following the shape. So of course, if I, my shadow under the neck, if I make it, let's say longer or smaller, then the feeling will be that, let's say my chin is kind of glued to neck if I don't show, you know, the depth. So um, and th this is why kind of here you have to be precise or why it's useful to study an anatomy because then you see the muscle and you then you understand what, where this shadow is coming from. It's coming because here is the elbow, the elbow turns. Here in the elbow, we have like one bone, the other bone, and they are forming this, this um, all this story. Yeah, so um, maybe we can do a lesson one day and we can practice, let's say, painting separately eye. Yeah, this is typical what you do in this, uh, in the um, academy, yeah, when you study, let's say, three years or five and then you take time and you paint all the body parts separately. Huh? So then, um, no. and, but of course today, I mean, um, 
I was talking with Darren about it. Yeah, so you also decide. Since our lessons, we copy the masterpieces. You decide, do you want it as a copy? Yeah, then you kind of uh, work more on your sketch to get the, the same feeling of this, the same guy. Or maybe you just do your interpretation of this painting. And meaning that, of course, you try to get like normal proportions for um, the body, but it can look, you know, like some some other person, some other. Uh, yeah. So this is like also set, setting your aim before painting kind of. Uh, um. So yeah, here where the flowers are, um, then then of course it's easier we just kind of maybe sketch light and dark areas approximately and this is also then once you did the, the body oh, but these all these flowers that considered also kind of it's unclear are, are these flowers or some some artist um those who, who analyze the art that they call it like minerals yeah and um there is actually interesting story behind these areas because you can see this very interesting kind of uh, pattern and the way of yeah this kind of it looks a little bit like mosaic yeah and the story behind it is that so uh michael rubel he was uh, born so in Russia, somewhere like in Siberia. And then his first um, painting, let's say, um, period, he went to Kiev. And in Kiev, he got his first job. He needed to uh, repaint in the church. Uh, so all these saint portraits. So in the, in the ceiling, there were like some angels made in mosaic. And one angel was missing, yeah? So destroyed or something happened. So he, as an artist, had to recreate. But what he did, so he didn't put the mosaic in there. He painted this angel, but the way it looks like it's mosaic. So then the, those um, art experts, they say that's from here, maybe it could come because it was the same period he started to work on this painting. So then you can see it's a little bit this mosaic feeling that he did also actually with the um, like pellet knife, yeah, and um, so something, something like this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, to to move on because of course <laughs> lots of um, work to do. So I I, I remove my sketch. Um, yes, yeah, so of course. Uh, for Tanya, so she's the one who um, will be looking, for, uh, watching the recording. Take your time to work on the sketch. Of course, not the quickly as I did now with the pencil. Yeah, more uh, detailed, um, and then can jump into the paints. Um, so color wise, it's actually nice easy today it's not uh, not too much so i use burnt umber as brown we will start with this one i use uh, paints gray that can be of course replaced just by black then i have um sienna yeah so sorry for some parts here uh, where the light is yeah i can even like mix sienna with white uh, I will try actually today uh, make him a bit lighter, yeah, a bit closer to original than my first <laughs> attempt. Um, the blue, let's say I take the ultramarine. For example, in the usual 12 color set, you usually get ultramarine and fatal blue. And um, what's important to remember about ultramarine in generally, that this paint is transparent. So, um, so in the, the pigmentation is different. Uh, that's why, for example, it's also easier for today's to do these light areas um, of the uh, trousers 
And then let's say I just add a little bit of black or paints gray, and then I can do the, the darker parts, yeah? So, but um, also fatal blue can be, or any other blue, blue that's not that, yeah? Um, I mean, if the blue is too dark, then you can just lighten up with the, with the white. Uh, some pinks, of course, yeah, for, for the background. Then we can just mix pink with the blue you choose and um, have some uh, purple. Yeah, then of course, purple mixed with white, then you can get this more kind of tender, um, yeah, light purplish for, for the flowers. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it. There are some interesting orange orange accents. Yeah, so maybe this, this print is not that bright, but here behind is one orange line here under the arm and a little bit in the hair and in the ear. And I find it actually very nice to, to show them. Um, first, it's kind of accents and they also play with the blue. Yes, because you remember these two colors are the, the opposite. Yeah, the blue orange. So they kind of um, help one each other uh, in the to build the color composition. So I start putting then my paints to the palette. To the palette, then I start with brown. Um, Karen, I think you were there also when we did this bull finch. So this Japanese painting. Yeah, 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 I think it was exactly. And you remember there we started with this outlining. Yeah, we, we, we took like this tiny brush. We made a bit watery the mix. And we first we kind of did as if it's a marker, let's say, but of course we do with brush. And we will start now also with the same. Yeah, but maybe not all the painting but a bit of the face, a bit of the arms, because also he has these uh, outlines and it will help us to kind of sum up uh, uh, the, um, or kind of start. And then we will go thinking about more um, like the fields already. Yeah, so this all part light, this all part shadow, then we move to trousers and to yeah background uh, yeah, so and then of course you go in cycles then you come back put more more effort on the face and um, yeah th those important parts let's say I would say also kind of the face but also not forget about his hands that actually I think like from um, the idea of the painting, they also play some role. So um, this feeling how he's, so it's a demon, but he doesn't look aggressive. He looks like very, he's thinking like um, maybe a bit sad, maybe kind of indecisive. Um, shall, shall he go to the human world? Shall, he go to the let's say his world. So he's it's it's supposed that he's sitting on top of the mountain, yeah. And so with these um, hands, yeah, this kind of interesting, very uh, position, like the way he kind of turns them, so it gives all this um, story. The yeah. So, so hands can be also like don't don't ignore them. Try maybe. And um, so I have brown, I have paints gray, uh, I have sienna and blue, yeah, and then I add white. So I started with my small tiny brush, yeah, make it wet, take some brown, depends. I can also add maybe a little bit of black or paints gray to my brown, yeah, but a little bit, don't go. Yeah, and I make here on my palette kind of very watery mix. Yes, you. so you remember to make a long thin line. What I need, 
I need enough paint on my brush, but my brush shouldn't be dry, so it's wet. Then it's easy to kind of go around. Yeah? And um, yeah, we can start, let's say, um, again, also not everywhere, but maybe choosing some important area. So maybe some, some mus muscles here, um, yeah. Let's say if you see that some area has not only the line, but let's say it's a little spot, then you can go ahead and do like, like color a field. Yeah, so let's say this corner of, uh, of the arm. Yeah, there is one part that I don't draw the line, I go straight away with the, uh, but then I come back here down. So where the trousers are ending and this first arm is starting, then I can just, let's say, outline. Yeah? And again, you can um, either you watch the original, it helps, of course, a lot. And you decide, I mean, not decide, you see where like the line there is thinner and then some parts, the line goes again more, um, more thick, yeah. So the rule of not drawing worms stays always, yeah. And and I always I keep on coming back to my mix. So I draw some line, yeah, and then I go back. I fill up my brush. So I kind of don't try to keep on moving your brush when there is no paint. Then it will be just it won't work. Yeah, so from time to time, I, I put my brush to the water, back to the back to do my painting mix, and then I do some. Yeah, so now it's kind of this outlining. Uh, also, try not to get stuck into the details. That's also <laughs> kind of a reminder myself to me. <laughs> I tend to do it, yeah. So just kind of trying to get around um, more quickly around the whole, um, yeah. So if kind of if you do the changes to your sketch, that's the moment where kind of you can correct something, yeah. Um, but. Um, but of course it helps if you have spent enough of time on your sketch and then it's um, there. And then now it's kind of, you already, then you think, let's say maybe more on the thickness of the line and um, uh, maybe also like straight away, which line is a bit darker, which line is a bit lighter. Yeah, this is also comes with time, like, Professionals, they then start. Um, so they can do it almost uh, at once. Yeah, they they start uh, painting and they put like very um, dark lines there, where in the end they will be that dark. But generally, how the process of creating painting works, you you do some area, then you do some other area and then you always come back you analyze um, which is darker which is the main accent and you keep on darkening you keep on um, yeah, adding <clears throat> tone and so it's not like oh i have painted that already why should i go back you should go back like as much as time as as you need yeah so here, of course, the hair. Yeah. Again, now we're putting, let's say, I'm putting this, my watery brownish mix to do the outline. But later, of course, in the end of the painting, I might go and add more black in there. And yeah. uh, I'm saving a little bit this area that I told you this is a bit orangey in the hair. Yeah, so I might add some lines, but Let's say I, I leave it for now. I'm 
maybe empty or with some little color so then I can add some orange in accent yeah some some lines inside the ear and of course the eye let's say yeah the face of course always very uh, um very important um, um so just kind of breathe in and with patience no rush yeah just kind of slowly um like with the face and eye it's a little bit just pre-thinking um where your brush will go because otherwise it's um because it's just gentle place yeah it's um it's tiny and as i said one millimeter there one millimeter there it's changing yeah? so yeah and can also don't have to do it straight away perfect so just let's say some first outline and then later when you um, continue with your work then kind of add and more and yeah, so yeah. and generally the the correct way is considered to do your painting as a whole so let's say it should look good in all the moments of uh, of your painting process yeah? Some people, um, I'm trying to remember if maybe also do it sometimes, kind of painting parts. So let's say I would leave all the all empty and then just do the head, all the details, all um, all the stuff, yeah, and then just it's done. Then I move physically to the other corner, yeah, or you can work on the whole and the whole one you keep on bringing up, bringing up, working on and yeah. Um, of course, there is no rule. You can work the way you like it, the way you also maybe depends on the work. Of course, if it's a huge size like this one, two meters, it's impossible yeah, to maybe have it. Then maybe he worked, I don't know, days just on, on the face. And then of course the flowers come later but for the size we use and generally it's considered to be a good practice especially when learning to paint as a whole yeah so not separately one piece um, yeah. um for the face let's say doesn't matter if we paint and our guy looks like this one exactly or it looks different there are some things that work for um all the faces my face your face um and it's the lightning yeah so once again the, the story of lights and shadows um and what is it it is that the sun is on top so we always have, let's say, the shadow under the nose. Yeah? Unless you do the, the Halloween tricks and uh, you place your yeah, the, the lighter under your nose and then you, that's why it feels so funny or um, un unusual because we are not get used to it. We are get used that under the nose there is always shadow because the sun is on top. And then the same story comes with the lips and with the eyes. Our lip that is like second down, it's always with the light. And the upper lip is always with more shadow. The eyes, yeah? So where the eyelashes is. The upper side of the eyelashes is always with more shadow. And, and this uh, part, of the eyelashes um, that are lower, there is always the line with light. So just kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's not much. You just remember this. And then your portrait looks more 
realistic, more professional, more understandable for um, yeah, kind of the viewer because then it feels natural. That's the way. Yeah, but if you kind of I don't know forget or you do the mistake, you do it differently, then straight away the some feeling comes. Um, um, let's say I, I did some stuff with my small brush and now I feel I want to move to maybe a little bit bigger then maybe some are coming already more um, like areas um, okay maybe a bit more <laughs> lines yeah so here my, like between the trousers yeah between the hand and trousers I see like more like exactly lines you can even um, a little bit actually when I was reading the story about the Vrubel I got a little bit the feeling like Van Gogh's story also complicated very emotionally um, yeah so Van Gogh also he kind of struggled and um, wasn't easy so um so Vrubel then um so he created the three so it's a trilogy of the demon yeah this is the first painting that is called the demon seated and this is about um you no know, let's say making decision or thinking um he's, he feels like kind of his here is isolation yeah he doesn't even feel like a demon, yeah? If you don't know the name of the painting, well, I don't see any, uh, yeah, what we usually imagine the demon should be, look like. And um, he's kind of passive. It's like totally introverted, solitary. These are these, um, these feelings, yeah? And, um, then there comes the second painting that is considered to be, let's say, unfinished. Um, but there you can see the demon, he's flying. Yeah, and it's very, um, he kind of changed a little bit the proportions. Uh, this one is the more proportional and actually like the more beautiful. So it's one of the most famous paintings of Rubel and that like people like and um, yeah, so, uh, but uh, the other two paintings there he has proportions, he has a bit longer um, legs, the body, but also during his time when he received the critics, yeah, some people would say, yeah, but like <laughs> he didn't get the proportions right. And, um, so, and then the third one is kind of very, it's a little bit more scary, like this painting, the third one is like, uh, and um, there you can see this demon, um, the name is, yeah, I'm not sure I can translate it now correctly, should look like an internet in Google, which is the correct translation to English, but it's like, could be de defeated, the demon defeated. And you can see him like also in very interesting, almost flying position, but on his back and with his hands covering his head. Also, he was also changing this painting when he already, let's say it was almost like it's, it was for the museum. I think also he brought it there and he actually repainted one, one hand. There was one hand kind of on the side, but then he changed it and put it also above the head. So, and, um, but there, which you can see, he's kind of, he has defeated, but if you study the painting and you see the eyes, the eyes are really like demon watching and it's like, no, he's not defeated. And um, so why I was making the comparison with, Van Gogh, because um, after this third painting of Demon, he actually got to the psychiatrical hospital, let's say. Uh, yeah, we also know that Van Gogh was also um, 
yeah. his painting and also painting inside there and yeah, so a little bit let's say artistically complicated his emotions all right let's go back to what we do here so i finished so i was still working with my brownish blackish mix here i've created then these already let's say yeah, my my figure mm -hmm. what i suggest that uh, acrylics they dry fast so we can actually uh, we can continue a bit with the body using the um, sienna and white color also brown let's say do the two mixes because for example i see this hand on the left is a bit more yellowish so let's say there is a bit more light this hand on the right i feel it's a bit more pale so for this one for the hand on the right i would use brown mixed with white and uh, the hand on the um, left then i would use sienna uh, mixed with them um, or ochre yeah you can also take ochre with white and remember more white and a little bit of brown or a little bit of sienna because the mix should be light because we are doing now the lights yeah so we now we did actually kind of dark spots now we place and decide okay these are my light areas and then you come back and work more a bit on your let's say shadowish yes as i said kind of uniting uh, where yeah the parts should uh, so i take my sienna take a pile of white and here i already take a little bit bigger brush so not this tiny one for the lines but let's say uh, yeah so we choose also the brush we choose the brush that you feel comfortable working with according to the size of the paper you choose yeah? or the canvas if you of course take a one meter to one meter canvas and then you take yeah the, the tiny brush well <laughs> i mean all possible but it just takes a lot of time and um there is also advisable for beginners not because a small brush will get you into lots of detailing yeah so maybe in the start usually you take bigger brush because then you do the bigger parts and then you take the small one and so what i do i go here around of my light areas uh, and if let's say it's a bit too yellowish or it's a bit too dark um you can actually go later and put a little bit of white on top uh, i use this a function of acrylics yeah so not all medium allow it but acrylics allow once it's dry i just take my clean brush and put like halfly transparent layer of white and it lightens up yeah so it's um uh, so um yeah, so now i go um now i'm allowed to let's say go inside the shadow parts and put those light areas. If of course later I go and darken them, but then it will help me to create more interesting um, situation in, in the shadow areas. Yeah? So kind of, um, yeah, so I do the hand with one hand. Yeah, so now I can also change. I take maybe brown. Um, well, it's also good to change, also not to make it to the same. Yeah, that my right hand is the same like left. Yeah, we are artists, the painter, we should create the interesting. Um, and, 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 and the interesting in art is, is made by. Um, making it different. Yeah? So. Ooh, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just talking. If you have questions, talk to me, of course. And, um. <laughs> 
I just, I just have so much information, you know, I want to give you so. <laughs> and I'm not over yet. <laughs> it's good listening to you talk. That's good, that's good. It was my, I was checking, yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, um, so yeah, uh, then light areas. Also, let's say if I did some mistake in my, when in the first stage of putting these dark parts also happened with me. I by accident I put dark where the, this light part of neck goes. Yeah, so now it's also the moment to kind of correct. Um, of course, it will, yeah, putting light on top of dark doesn't give you this very nice light, but it means you just need to take more paint and kind of just sit more paint on top. Um, if it also doesn't work, then you just take um, enough of white paint, place it there, wait till it's dry, and then come back, let's say, with light sienna. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I go also around the face. Yeah, if it's needed, change your brush, take smaller brush for the face. Yeah, because. Um, uh, but face, you will notice you will need to darken it lots of more. So now I kind of bravely place light areas a lot, but for the face to look um, nicer, you will see you kind of you add, you keep on darkening, you darken, darken, darken it, and and don't be afraid. Um, yes, because. Exactly this game um, of light and shadow, yeah, and yeah, and then it's important kind of. So if the lower lip has the light, and here, yeah, so one can also like kind of just can take time and analyze and study what's the lightest spot on the face, yeah. So the the lower lip, then there is light in the chin. Then I see, of course, this light, the typical light on the cheek. Yes. And what happens with the cheek? The cheek is, it has spherical shape. So there work this basic theory of light and shadow on, uh, on the sphere. Yes. And it means there is like this light bar and it goes changing. Yeah. So here we can see a bit more light. So it's like, you know, for the bony people, Sometimes then you can see it's not going like smoothly down. Then it, if like, if the bone is showing through the skin, then, then it's kind of straight line breaking down. Yeah, so like maybe he, this guy here, he has a bit more tendency to this, yeah? But um, generally, of course, still. Yeah, and um, yeah, so it's also good to repeat this basic exercise of, you know, sphere or like painting apple. Why? Because then you learn this and then you apply it everywhere. You, um, anything, you, if you paint the head of the person, if you paint also inside the head, if I'm doing the eye, if I'm doing the nose, the cheek, the lips, I can split the human face into the geometrical objects. And then I just apply how the light and shadow is showing there. And then it kind of works. Uh, yeah. um, so, I mean, if you want, you tell me, we can repeat this spherical exercise or feel free to Google. It's like, of course the internet is full and it's, um, it's, it's normal. I also sometimes, I mean, I repeat it of course, when I explain to students, but meaning that repeating all this basic theory is useful it's uh, yeah like the same with perspective of course you learned yeah you have points of parallel lines they come into one point etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, it's always good to refresh the, the knowledge um what i do now i take back my small brush and i have a will to work a bit more on face so I've put these light areas and now I will just 
darken up a bit. So uh, the shadow under the nose, shadow a bit on upper lip, and then the cheek. Yeah. So also kind of what's also the story that don't make choose where is the lightest area and then the others put some um yeah so light brown but but put it there yes if you leave all these areas with light then it will not work yeah? so um don't don't be um, scared and also because with acrylics then you can come back and kind of uh, yeah, put this white stroke on top if it's needed, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm darkening a lot under the eye, of course, yeah, and I leave some light areas, but it's, um, yeah, and then again, so in this moment, you can practice this exercise of halfway closing your eyes, and then just looking at the head, not all body, but just the hand and see how all this area around the eye, how it's all dark. Yeah, there, there is like this light, this light spot of the eye a bit kind, kind of coming through, but all the other story is um, uh, and then what else I see? Yeah, so I see kind of light on forehead but also the forehead because it's changing its form. So our forehead goes straight, then this part above the nose. So this is also the typical area that should come with some shadow. Yes, and the shadow shouldn't be that dark, but it should be there because that's the way we understand the shape is changing. And, um, yeah, so, um, and then of course it also comes the story of how dark you make. Yeah, um, then um, kind of trying to um, this uh, it comes with, with with practice, but. It's, it's, you start with analyzing. <clears throat> yeah, if I put my darkest spot, uh, I don't know, on the cheek, then it will be very kind of yeah, strange because the cheek is soft, the shadow there goes softly. and uh, But exactly where the nose is. Yeah? So I will repeat, like some rules, <laughs> I apologize, but I will be repeating them <laughs> again and again. So um, this softness of the lines and darkness. Yeah, the very uh, one of the rules should remember. There is object, there is no object. And that's the rule for areas where you can be sure to place like darker and stricter lines. So, the line is not soft as a cheek because then cheek is like spherical, it moves. But the nose, what happens? It's like, um, so those areas, like we have 2D paper, but we are showing 3D. So if in real life 3D, you have an object, but then comes like air space. Yeah, and then you see, let's say what's, what's behind. These areas, you can be sure to put more dark and the, the line and uh, yeah, so kind of, so when, when I paint, I, I kind of replay those rules in my head. There is object, because like I come to the place and it's like, okay, what line should I put? Soft, strict, dark, um, blended. And then kind of I analyze and uh, I say, okay, this is the, area of this shape, or well, this is the area where actually the object is over. And what comes next on my paper, it's already the other story. 
So there I go and put the and all right, all right, all right. Yeah, and uh, okay, I yeah, I apologize if I, I think our lesson today will be longer. So kind of if you don't have much time, tell me and then um let's say I don't know, you can send me WhatsApp to take a look what's what's done there. I'm I'm happy here to stay as long as needed because I kind of enjoy and want to do my demon also nicely. But um, it seems a bit complicated, yeah, because like of course it takes time all this phase and um yeah and now here i go darkening up for example um here is a good example so if at this moment you can just kind of look quickly i'll explain so let's say here here is my face my neck and look what happened you see this light area behind yeah so of course, it is lighter, yeah? So if I look here, it is lighter than this area on the neck, but it's not that light. What I do, I bravely cover it, yes? It has to be united. So I leave this, this um, light bit on the neck because of course it's so it's the shape, but it doesn't have to jump out, yeah? So even this one now is already a bit too light, yeah? I compare. I say my face is light. Even now, here are lots of areas in my face that are too light. I go again and, and, and I darken them. Yes. It's um, don't be afraid to do this. Yes. If by accident you do a bit too much, okay, you can come back clean up a bit. But the more common mistake is actually that's exactly this one, leaving those light spots where they shouldn't be so light. Yeah? So um and this is the um, this this is the message that <laughs> I was trying and and then the other like technique is also let's say here I start working on the arms yeah um, again I come back with some darker areas and I see lots of game there are muscles there are lots of different shapes this muscle goes this way there is another one the shape like whew, you can yeah uh, spend hours so what i do of course i do let's say some moment i do detailing yeah i, I try to kind of do lots of um, details because i want my painting you know to look um, nicely and so i pay attention so I spent some time doing this, but then I will go and unite them all by looking at all painting in general. So now I do details here on the chest, on, on arms, but then I will go and see, okay, how this chest looks according to the face. And if I see that my chest is the same light lightness is my face no then it's not uh, they are contradicting they are yeah so then i go and cover all the chest area with some um a bit darker and here with acrylics it's so nice with this material that you can uh, kind of um do this half transparent layers on top like it's so easy it's so I have some, some layer, it's dry, and then I can again on top with white or with some darker waterish consistency. And, and voila, it's, um, it became more pale or it became more dark, but it still keeps this original color underneath, yeah? So it doesn't become white or black, it becomes say brownish as it was or yellowish but with this um, more pale or more more shadowish um, area yeah so yeah and and when you kind of follow these ideas you notice that actually you need to darken up much more than yeah it's um 
deep thought or it, it felt the way. Mm -hmm. Because those light, light, light areas, they have to be few. They don't have to be um, uh, like everywhere a lot. Yeah? The opposite, the less, the less you leave, this accents, yeah? Because this is how our brains work. What we see is the relationship between light and shadow. Uh, and this is how our brains, they kind of form this thing into the shape and then we recognize, okay, this is this shape because the light and shadow are in this um, relationship one between another. Uh, so like how I can say it's a cube or uh, it's a, it's fear, yeah, because then I see how the shadow on cube is different and so on and so on. Yeah, this begin and so and like learning uh, how to paint. Why you spend so much time painting these boring cylinders, cubes, and all this stuff, yeah, because all the rest of the world of our objects, you can split into these things, like like say here, they have this cylindrical a bit can be a yeah, shape, or if you draw the like the court curtains, yeah, the, this typical like you draw some material. Yeah, it has this serum, or like the bottle, I'm painting some uh, composition with apples, yeah, this typical some um, glass and so on the table then it's the, the book then it's the cube you practice painting the cube you learn how the shadows are there and you use this method to paint the table the chair the book the house yeah so and, uh, and then the same story with the with the spherical huh? so then you paint your apples the oranges uh, in this um, yeah, so it's a little bit all right, right. Yeah, and also remember if you get tired, let's say like like oh too much shadows, too much stuff on this body, take a break. Change, uh, wash your brush, take a break, take a blue color, do the pants. Yeah, because uh, the trousers also, you will not do them perfectly from the first go. Yeah, put the base layer on the blue, let it dry, and then, um, I don't know, go to flowers, and then kind of moving around. Yeah, I find like, to me, it helps because um, so instead of trying making it perfect, my body from the first attempt, and then actually probably more ruining it because then you get tired and like ah oh, yeah, it's just it's kind of switch. Okay. Yeah, or or you can also spend. Okay, this moment is comes more when you already have more stuff painted. Yeah, then you take a break and analyze in generally, and then just go around your painting, darkening or lightening some areas. Yeah, just kind of again checking this relationship between light and dark. To um, yeah, you see this. Yeah. Oh, Karen oh, <laughs> scared me. <laughs> yeah, he made me jump. I didn't realize he was going to jump up. I see the tail. I see this. Not yeah. helpful. Not <laughs> helpful. Get off. I was so absorbed in what I was doing, I hadn't realized it. Of course. In. I mean, <laughs> I also would be when this unexpected helper comes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, good, good, good. Um, yeah, so I was telling about darkening, darkening up. Look, yeah, it's very dark here, but after his elbow, yeah, this elbow on the 
right side, yeah? So it's like you can go bravely there with all this, yeah, uniting this shadow under the hands, yeah, and going up to elbow and there where the back is. All is dark, all together, yeah? So you paint details, then you take a break and kind of go and make them all together. It will make your painting only better, only better. Yeah. Like, don't tell me like, oh no, I'm gonna lose all my details. You're not gonna lose them because um, um, the painting in general should, should look good. In general, it should look united. And the t details will be there like you did them and, um, yeah, but, but okay, I move to a bit of blue. I move to paints. And um, like how I paint, how I, I do the paints. Then like the acrylics typical um, system, I take light. So I take my ultramarine, I can mix it with a bit some white. So I take the lightest, but the reason the pants. Yeah, I place it. And then I can go all over my pants, let's say, where I see more light areas. So I'm not now not scared to put more light than there actually is. Because with a simple story, covering light is easier than covering dark. Yeah, so I prepare my base layer. Mm. Light, then let it dry, and then can come back and do these dark stories and Yeah. And it's also then it's also a good method because then kind of it's easier to keep the light areas, yeah. Of course, I mean, the ones we usually always tell like take care of the light areas that should stay light, yeah. Because um, if I go first with lots of dark, then I might by accident just cover what shouldn't be covered. And then I struggle to get back this this lightness area. So yeah, of course, if like this the same area here under the arm where the back is, yeah, of course there's lots of dark blue. I mean, I don't have to go there with light blue. I can you know uh, just uh. and then again, for example. So first, my step was mixing ultramarine with white. Let's say with lots of white and doing all this pale blue. Now I can go just straight to ultramarine without mixing nothing and go around my pants and see how it looks. Does it, does it match nicely some, um, some areas? Yeah? Or maybe it's too bright or maybe it's too, yeah. So I feel it's a bit too bright. So then I just can mix it with a little bit uh, paints gray uh, and, um, and then uh, can be a little bit of white. If you put too much paints gray, let's say you can do a bit of white and then it will look a bit more grayish maybe. And, um, yeah, and then I work. Nice, yeah, paints gray with the ultramarine paints gray and some white gives me a very nice, this um, kind of grayish blue. Yeah, it's not that bright as ultramarine in, in itself. Yeah, because ultramarine kind of very, a bit not aggressive, but yeah, very intensive when it's alone. So I calm it down, yeah. 
because also the pants it's not the the story where i want kind of yeah it's it's more like the background story so um, So what's interesting maybe I know about very interesting uh, moment about this painting what happened so there is also a Russian writer named uh, Lermontov he's considered to be like a classic uh, poet writer in, in uh, Russian literature he would leave also it's like he would be 19th century so like 1840 um, or something, yeah. Um, in so in 1840, Lermontov, writer, he he wrote a poem, and the uh, the poem was about the story is about there is a demon who fell in love with the princess, and yeah, honestly, I I don't. <laughs> remember it reading I'm not sure if I read but the story is that yeah I think the princess died in the end because of the kiss of demon or something and the demon oh the batteries are on sorry sorry my computer is the technical moment I forgot to plug in my computer <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I was traveling this day, so I kind of, you know, you unplug and so and yeah, so the story was this writer, the story, the demon, the demon probably had also some emotional controversials, he was in love, but you know, he would, because of him, the princess will die, but he loves her and so, yeah, so there was, I think, even the people decided for like the um, Maybe it was some jubileum of this poem, or they were republishing this poem. So already in the 20th century. And they asked artists to create the illustration for um, this poem. And there were different options. But like, so Vrubel, Michael Vrubel, he did this demon and like he won. So nowadays, this image of this painting that we're painting today is like what you imagine, like when, when people read the poem, that's what they have in, in mind, kind of, yeah? So it was like very strong, this, um, and um, yes, yeah, so um, it was, this painting was kind of, and then probably, I don't know, maybe he decided to create more <laughs> demon paintings, the Rubel. This, um, uh, what else into the book? Yes, one, one another interesting fact that I found when I was um, reading, preparing for the lesson, that sometimes um, the art, uh, people, I don't know, critics or the ones who learn, study and analyze, they actually compare this painting of this seated demon with some other famous uh, paintings. So there is one um, Michelangelo painting of uh, Prorok. Yeah, I don't know, like also some, some religious um, so it's also like the position is like um, a bit similar sitting on the stone. Then there is one painting of the Jesus Christ. Uh, the painter's name is uh, Kramskoy. I suppose it's also kind of Russian painting, but it's also there is like the, uh, let's say field, like mountain landscape view. And there is the big stone and the, Jesus is kind of sitting on the stone and has a bit of this also thinking. Uh, and um, so uh, there are some um, art that can kind of they compare a bit what maybe 
goes back to those. Huh? I mean, it's normal, of course. Like, let's say, what do we do now? We now take art of, of those people, we study it, we copy. Well, they were doing the same. They were taking, let's say, the, the Rubens would take Michelangelo's work, study it. So, yeah, interesting how he did it. So, of course, then you get inspired and you get some. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's it's never created from the zero. It's always, of course, goes comes with the with the other background. Okay, the trousers is also kind of. Um, I do. I, I try to do some details, some of these spots, but then for it not to look like a chess board, yeah, I unite it. Yeah, so I'm not scared to use my details. I um, kind of I create it, but then I put them all together. Yes, yes, yes. So, what time is it? No, okay, we are. So, I'll go a little bit with the um, with pink. Yeah, so mm, Try to not, not overdo. On my first painting, I also did a bit too dark pink. Now I'll try correct my mistake and do very pale. Yeah, maybe it's also so. Um, yeah, simply then I mix pink with blue. I will use the same leftovers here I have from uh, Ultramarine and then just sit more white in there, yeah, so. Yeah, it's also the story actually that um, when we're creating purple, it's like never ending story, like depending which blue you take, which which red or which pink you take, purples are always so different. And sometimes you can create very vivid, nice, bright purples. And now let's say I take ultramarine with my pink and I have like very pale, it's not vivid. Yeah, but in this story, maybe it's also good. Yeah, um, so this is maybe exactly what I'm looking for, but just like mixing purple is always some. Um, and, and yeah, and then again, if. If you feel you need to change for the bigger brush, yeah, go ahead. Um, like let's say for this big area, of course, on the, on the left side, um, on the right side where we have more of these white flowers, then I use um, smaller brush. And, and what I also do, for example, I've mixed my purple mix. And I went here and I did one spot. If it feels too uh, dark, I just go in parallel, take some sip of white, but I don't go adding white in this mix on my palette. I actually kind of can even mix on top of my paper. Yeah? So it's, it's, um, it also works because also with, with practice, what happens? You already know how all the paints, how they mix. I know that uh -huh, if I take this much white and I already have this much purple on my brush, what I get on my paper is this. Yeah, and then it just kind of that allows you to work maybe a bit faster or a bit more also free, not, not so kind of, uh, but I mean, of course you can also mix everything very like, carefully on, on your palette and um, and then go placing yeah, to like for watercolors I think this this is more important that not only you you never kind of mix colors on the paper when you work with watercolors you always of course use 
palette and then even before placing your brush stroke on paper you kind of check on the other paper and then if the the tone the intensity the the everything you expect is the way then you go to your main work and because what the cause of course it's all about like one stroke thing yeah and and then acrylics we can allow a little bit this three. Okay, there is a bit more, let's say, Bordeaux. Yeah, the red. I'll make a bit of red mixed with brown. And then I can do a bit this dark, this dark purple. Um, Maybe even it can be also just dark purple, but depends how how you feel, how you mix. Yeah, I will add a bit more. So now I will add either you mix dark purple, let's say you then instead of pink, you take red and you mix with the um, with blue. Yeah. And I mean adding a bit of brown will help you also this um, brightness yeah? but in this case don't add white because then it will be too pale and this will affect the same story that i keep on telling of, of this light and shadow yeah? and then if inside the shadow then you put this pale so you, you have some white added in it it will be a bit more power you will kind of Find yourself. You keep on keep on darkening this this area. Yeah? So let's say if if your color is too bright and you want to lower a bit, you can add yeah, let's say a bit of brown. It will calm down, but it will not have this um, this lightness. Yeah? And then you can do a bit maybe some accents of. I've gone a sort of bit real with my background to be honest, Evie, but I'm just going to sort of ask that sort of background with the rough sort of colours that they uh, that we used there. Uh huh. I'll just send you a picture of what I've got at the moment. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, I'm very, very, very curious to see. Yeah. Also, so let's say. Um, of course, background you can kind of change, play around a bit. But um, remember a little bit of these orangey accents. Yeah, so you, you might want to mix them red with yellow. You can not have orange as the ready color, and just play place those strokes. Yeah, I really think this orangey story will. Um, yeah, cool. Will do good. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, Darren's demon is coming. Wow. Okay, maybe yeah. On on my screen, not so good to see. So I'll just look. yeah. Because Karen, you can also see it on your phone. Then I'll study. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So let me first think and analyze. Um, the light on the ear, yeah, I think it's a little yeah. bit jumping out. I know there is also this orange thing, and in his painting, the, the ear is also yeah. like interesting, but just a little bit calm, calming down, yeah. No problem, yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's 
li even lighter than the forehead and the mm -hmm. nose and the lips. Yeah? But, um, and the same I would do. So um, again, so you have Darren, you told me you have this printed out painting. Yeah. Now, exactly, let's do this exercise. You halfly close your eyes, look at the printed version and look at this area behind the right elbow, yeah, where the back is visible. Mm -hmm. And without changing your eye position, you move to your painting and tell me what you see. And like, I'm like for this light and shadow. So you look at the original, you halfly close your eyes and all this area under the arm, yeah. it's all dark, it's on the shadow. And when you move the same eyes to your painting, then exactly here you see this light area, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so on the back, so let's say here, yeah. here where your um, somehow to push so it's yeah. So um, under the elbow and where you see the back, yeah. Just kind of take some brown and uh, make, make it a bit darker. Make, make yeah. it darker exactly. Just kind of and make it darker and feel free to go. It's very nice color, this, this, um, this red you've created. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I like it very much, this mix, um, but still kind of united. Unite this, uh, this dark reddish with the back. Yeah? yeah. Don't, there is no need to trace the line in this area. There mm -hmm. are areas where we are tracing lines between, it's always between light and shadow. But here is the story that's all the shadow area. So there is no need to, to do this. Um, yeah. But in general, the background, actually, very nice, very awesome. Yeah. That's all I was doing there was just basically a very wet brush, very sort of. Uh, Spongy type brush, and I was just basically just dabbing onto the uh, page. Good, good, good. Yeah, I should try it actually. Your, your style and um, and let me see. Yeah, the the trousers. Um, well, personally, I would also calm down those white spots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. They kind of even contradict a bit with the background. Like I like this white area of the flower of yours on the background. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then it's like, I, I look too much because this contrast with these whites on the trousers, it's too big. So yeah. where, where, where are the people looking on the painting? Mm -hmm. They are looking where the most contrast is, where, where the biggest, relationship between the biggest light and the biggest shadow. So we should create this contrast relationship in our important areas, the face, the hands, yeah, or, but the trousers, yeah, so also as the same as we don't create too much of these stories. Yeah. Yeah? And um, so not only because trousers are not important, also because just kind of, we can't have 15 of them. Yeah, yeah. we should have two or three maximum. Yeah? So just taking like, let's say, yeah, bluish and again, unite the, but generally very emotional. I like her and you. your, interpretation it has some i think what's the best i like on your painting is it's actually you got this feeling of this he's thoughtful he is mm, yeah, yeah. introvertal sorry solitary maybe he's making some decision yeah is, uh, yeah so kind of um yeah i'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it actually i'm quite pleased with it, <laughs> <laughs> it one really point there's one point I was thinking, well, I'm not quite sure about this. It's going away from me a bit, but uh, no, come the end of it, I'm happy with it. 
<laughs> no, you should be happy. It, it has emotion. It has this, um, yeah, this, this power. Okay, I'll go tapping as well. <laughs> I mean, a, a seven point of pressure I was using this. It's, uh, it's very uh, quite a large brush, but uh, yes, mm. uh, it's just a. I don't know how well you can see that, but uh, it's quite. Uh huh. Yeah. But you can see it's quite oh, a yeah. sort of uh, quite a big tip to it, but it's a very spongy. The, the, the end is kind of is more circular, no? Yeah, yeah. It's sort of, it's, it's, it's almost like a. I suppose you could almost say it's some sort of pear shaped in the way sort of thing it's yeah yeah, yeah it, it, it comes into a cone sort of thing but it's sort of very careful but it's a very sort of spongy uh type brush <laughs> so, uh, what what um also like generally don't throw away old brushes because old brushes are also good for this tapping story mm, yeah because they're fluffy and then um kind of then you can get those the hair will get you also some interesting um yeah um, thing oh cool um yes this this orange line next to the trousers this is up to you to decide yeah if you like it it's very shiny yes mm -hmm. um if you like it leave it yeah, if you also, you can also calm down a bit. Yes, um, but like it's just, and it's already just, but also very nice here on the right. Uh, sorry, on the left side, this pinky orangey story, where the background in general on the, the lines. Nice, nice time. Happy, happy our complicated yeah. <laughs> task actually has turned out. Um, how you get on Karen yeah slowly <laughs> I kind of at the moment feel like he, his face looks like he's wearing war paint shall I send you over <laughs> send it over to you I mean of course we're always happy yeah, to see them and um, I, I know that Karen, Karen is more, let's say, patient or more like take, taking time and it's good. Yes, I mean, it's uh, so there is no way you should rush. It's quite probably because I have less experience of this. I wouldn't <laughs> say actually that it comes from experience. I would say it's maybe comes more from maybe personality or like the way you maybe generate personality and your own style because sometimes uh... yeah I mean it's um... I often go off and leave stuff and then kind of come back to it yeah weeks later um, ah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't started any background yet um, Darren, any famous painting wish from your side? Oh, I mean, it's a question. If there is no, you it's yeah. not a must, but just kind of maybe. maybe uh... I suppose one I've always had a soft spot for was um, was it Moni's Water Lilies, like with the bridge of the lily pond, because I, I always remember doing that when I was at school. Uh huh. So, uh, that's a famous painting I've always had a soft spot for. Okay. Um. Um. So, uh, yeah. Honestly, I don't. I don't recall it. Uh, like, if you, if you can maybe uh, type or type uh, or send or um yeah. or maybe um yes. Sometimes it's um like uh, my English or my interpretation of British accent. I don't always get the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the precise um. Oh my God, I even have to put brush down to see what Karen is sending. Whoa, that's the emotion. That's the love it, Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
how you find yourself running? Um, well, I, I mean, it, mean it, it, it's kind of feels like it's a first layer. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And like, I kind of keep wanting to work into it because um, it feels incoherent um, and kind of very blocky at the moment. Um, so, okay, if, if you like either you go, let's say, take a rest with background, but if you go back to the body, so what I would work, I would remember again, darkening here where goes the neck, yes, till these first muscles and also the chest. So like kind of, you can feel free to darken these areas. Um, and again, it's not because of this guy in particular, it's in generally, yes, uh, the head is more, let's say volume up than the neck, yeah, so this 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 neck area, yeah, here on, on, so I understand it just kind of your like work in progress, but like if I would work, if I would continue your painting, then I would kind of just uh, darken here all the neck and this chest area that comes close to the trousers, because then I have my this lighting game, uh, light and shadow game on my arms. Yeah, it's more kind of the. the um, but I uh, love the hair. The hair is very nice. Yeah. yeah it's a uh, good, good job on that. Mm. Um, with the face, yes. Um, very, very emotional. Um, so the eye, it's. Again, it can be also the artistic way. Yes, the way we paint the eyes can be realistic or it can be like, let's say, interpretation, yeah? Here I see like, let's say you have this uh, black, uh, this brown circle in between the white areas, yeah? If you look like very close to his eyes, yeah, he actually like this left side, there is almost no white, it's all black. And there is just this little highlight on one side. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but I mean, the way we can paint, we can paint realistic or we can paint, you know, like interpretations. Maybe I want his eye exactly to, to be bigger and just kind of this, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Think about, but I hope you you yes. And with the nose, yes, very nice the shadow under the nose. But the nose itself also should have a bit of um, dark area. Yeah, so uh, like uh, it's hard for me to show on the phone because the the, like screen, the screen is here. But um, here, so not only the shadow under, but the shape of the nose itself, it also has shadow, yeah? So just a little bit kind of very nice, like the nose, I like it very much. I like very much this shadow in the corner of the nose, yeah, of yours, but just a little bit this shadow that, that belongs to the nose, yeah? Because you remember we have shadows that are falling and shadows that belong to the object. So this shadow under, so here is under the nose is dark because it's the falling shadow of the nose. The nose's object is, is, is coming out and it gives the shadow to our, this upper lip, yeah? But the nose itself also has its own shadow and it has its shadow because it has the shape, because the light is coming from top and so here we have light that with our curvy nose that is like spherical, then there comes the moment of the shape of the nose that is under, the light is not getting there anymore. So you also have to show this, um, yeah, like a little bit of line. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Uh, so, I mean. To give the nose shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, to give the nose the shape, 
uh, otherwise. Uh, but I love your strokes. I love your um, this this kind of uh, like here the this uh, the body area under the chin. Yeah, so this kind of shoulder on the left, very um, picturesque. Yeah, very. Um, yeah, nice. And there are also emotions. There are emotions in the trousers. In the, yeah, the, this this low area at the bottom of the trousers, kind of. And uh, yeah, just kind of work, work a bit more. And um... ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, that's the classic Darren. Huh? So it's also were on my list, you know, of, yeah, totally. I've always, I've always had a soft spot for that painting. It's one which I sort of mm -hmm. studied when I did the uh, art at school. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. Won't be easy. <laughs> 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 but I mean, if it's easy, we might get bored and <laughs> like, let's, let's have some um, challenge. Cool. Then um, Darren's choice is up uh, for the next time. Yeah. I saw, I think, Mel walking. <laughs> yeah, Mel's got home. Mel's home. Yeah, she's in the background here. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, I've spotted you. <laughs> What uh, did, did she commented already? Did she saw your? Mel, yep. what do you think about the demon of Darren? Hi. He's done very well. Ah, uh -huh. awesome. He's done very well. <laughs> I totally agree with you. Too harsh for me. <laughs> <laughs> and and what what happened with the Westminster Palace? Well, it's a question to you. Oh, I still haven't done it. <laughs> I've got my paper all gouached ready. I'll get there. <laughs> good, good, good. I was like, Mel is not sending me anything. <laughs> not enough hours in the day. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, we've chosen them Darren's choice. Yeah, cool. The lilies, lots of green, lots of pinky. Yeah. And whew, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll study it to see <laughs> what's the best way to make this yeah. okay. interpretation in, um, in two hours. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that, that's the trick. It's not, uh, not only the, yeah. Right, well, I'm going to love you and leave you all there. So I will see sure. you all next week. See you so, next uh, week, Darren. Thanks for yeah. joining. No problem. Thanks ever so much. Yeah. Bye -bye. See you soon, Darren. You Enjoy too. the sunshine. You too. Catch you there. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, Darren. We can uh, Karen, we continue because I'm also kind of my work is still in process. So um, I don't. Oh, don't okay. Yeah. Don't don't I don't stop recording yet because I mean. Um, we we continue, yeah. So if you yeah, um, yeah it's it's ten to eight. Yeah, um, I was gonna say it is, but of course you're ahead of us. Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Karen was like, "What? Four no, hours? How did that happen? <laughs> I've been painting that long. <laughs> that was funny." <laughs> <laughs> like what what happened with the time did i jumped Did you study art? Well, um, I actually went in my university years, I've studied uh, architecture. Ah, yeah. So nowadays I kind of think like, why I actually didn't went to art academy, but those times probably, you know, kind of this profession 
maybe looked more appealing, I don't know. But um, I've, I've worked some years as architect, but then I kind of just <laughs> was honest with myself and I said, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. It, it was, um, yeah, and, but painting, of course, it was like, I, I would, you know, I would be good in painting when I was a child and I liked it, so kind of just um, like decision to make it as a profession or try to go to this, this place of artists came, let's say, yeah, some uh, later, so, um, but, um, I so before entering the university, I actually took some painting uh, lessons. Of course, it was um, it was a very good uh, teacher, and it was like three year course. And you start yeah. um, with um, also with all these basics, like how to measure, how to. But she did it all very quickly. She said, "Like we're not spending here." years on this stuff like you do in the art academies yeah, yeah. just explained quickly and then we moved to painting all these uh how you call this gips yeah figures so like yeah the the both like uh, eye nose ear hands legs then they were like gips head yeah and the idea actually is that if you learn to paint the the human head then you can paint anything because this stuff is the most complicated and then and um and this uh, let's say mythology that she was using it actually allows almost like one person get to the nice level um because uh, there were like many students different yeah ages and um different heads different aims say some just wanted to paint for themselves some want to enter yeah university or something and uh, but the way she explained and everything i think in in my life this was the most valuable studies so like all the money i spent on my university <laughs> and the time well if i would know back then you know but and um, so for even nowadays when I paint, I hear her voice in my head of all these rules, of all these uh, things she would repeat. And then she comes here now like this. And then it's, um, yeah, so it was. Um, and and where, did you, where did you do that? Was that in person? Exactly, yes. It was. I was still in school when I did um, these lessons with her. And then I entered the university and I continued painting with her for some years. And in Riga, exactly, in my, my hometown in, in Latvia. And, um, and then she's kind of, she's doing this kind of um, le uh, lessons, teachings. And her husband, he's also an artist, but he does then the oil uh, paintings. So yeah. with her, we, we did, it was always just the pencil drawings. Yeah, so we would do from time to time, let's say just for like fun or entertainment, we would do the other medium. Yeah, maybe one lesson with watercolors, maybe also these uh, chalk, this charcoal, um, yeah, but just kind of a bit to learn to practice maybe some other, but all these main basics were just the pencil and then you have all these HB, B2, yeah, um, like soft pencils and uh, hard and then you do things. And yeah, like also when I, then I have my huge, um, like where, where I keep all those drawings from those times and then I look them through and it's like, oh my God, did I really could do this, you know, because, um, it's um but because of course she kind of she guided she helped and um yeah and also because it wasn't um done in two hours like so the lesson lasts yeah two hours with her but what you do you come then in the class 
Yeah, you have your paper, your, your board, you start the drawing, then you sign the name, lesson is over, you leave the painting, then yeah, in two days when the lesson is again, you come, you find this drawing of yours, put it back and continue <laughs> the same one. So like um, the third year is when she invites the real models, the people, and then you already try, so it's not from the Gibbs, so it's not, yeah, the, uh, it's the real person and you should, and I mean, then it would be like maybe three or four sessions. Yeah, so then it may be eight hours in total that you spend doing this drawing of, and um, yeah, so, <laughs> this, but we talked with you about this last time that, because, but, just sometimes I try to remind my, my students that <laughs> don't expect this perfect result from two hours of <laughs> Yeah, I need lots of reminding of that because I expect perfection no matter how long it took me. <laughs> okay, I'll keep on reminding you, Karen, no problem. <laughs> yeah. It's, um... Yeah, yeah. What about you? Did you went to some art academy or? Um, what, no, I did theatre. You told me, yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's also very... Um, Artistic. Exactly. Yeah. It's so, so, so challenging being an actress, isn't it? Oh, it, it's very challenging to make money doing it. Um, make, make a living of, doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's probably either somehow you get to the top of those famous people and you earn some crazy money. Like, yeah. Or you don't. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's um but for example, for like if not talking about uh, the economical er part, for me it would be a real challenge to play something or to get on the stage and do this um play like it, for you it wasn't like it was let's say easy or it was a pleasure and um, it was a pleasure uh, yeah cool hmm. interesting so exciting to um yeah it's uh and also like i did have a go at stand-up comedy <gasps> and i oh god i was so rubbish at it because you have to get up there as yourself and be yourself. Okay. Whereas when you're acting, you're representing somebody else. So that you kind of, it's a completely different mm. feeling, yeah. I guess. So you, it's almost like when you're on, on stage in front of other people, because it's not you, it's yeah. this person that you're representing. Of course. Then it's not, as scary mm. as something like stand-up comedy. I was really bad at it. Yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, of course, I've never kind of thought about this in, in such perspective, but very curious what you tell me. Yeah. Um, I went once, I remember I was visiting my friend in, in London and we went mm -hmm. to some stand-up comedy and it was amazing it was hilarious it was so but at the same time i was like thinking wow like i i wouldn't be able to do it in yeah watching somebody who's really proficient at it you yeah. know it's, it's great but no i'm not gonna go there but, so which like let's say your roles which ones and uh, were your favorite or which one you um my favorite well I did a lot of uh devising so I uh, and a lot of physical theater so most of the stuff that I've done you will never have heard of um mm -hmm. but things I have done I I played bottom in the Midsummer Night's Dream mm -hmm. um on the fringe and oh. that would be the big that would be the thing you'd probably know oh the cherry orchard I played the singer mm -hmm. that was massive Wow. That was so much, so much to learn. <laughs> um, but again, like a small community theatre production of that. 
why why from... like continue like why you like what was the moment where you stopped or like you could continue now why not i mean that's not the i could yeah um i'm my skill really is is physical theater or was physical theater um and i did a lot for a very long time Aww. i have quite serious uh, osteoarthritis <gasps> so i walk with a stick and that shouldn't preclude it but it's very different my body's very different so it's it was it's almost kind of returning and relearning mm. how that, that works now yeah. Yeah. and and that's kind of really why but i need that artistic outlet oh, yeah, up my so and, and i and i do love I love creating. I make stuff all the time. Cool. Um, I, I love your uh, bravery, you know, then you say, OK, then I take just different approach to art and I can still, um, you know, have, have um, yeah. Yeah. You have to, um, I mean, I make a living in an office. But mm -hmm. having said that, I love that. I love my job. Yeah. I can't complain about my job at all. Um, I'm very, very lucky. Yes. Good. Hmm. Yeah. I, mean, being, I think being flexible, staying flexible in your life. Yeah. And, and just accepting what comes and then just kind of, okay, the turning point. Let's see what, what we can do about it. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, I'm obviously older, <laughs> and yeah, you do you and you what you want changes, you know. Well, as evidenced by me moving out of London. Mm -hmm. Yes, with 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 changes, for example, sometimes I when I observe or I hear other people, uh, I'm always kind of a bit surprised when people tell. Ah, I'm, I'm scared to change. I'm afraid yeah. to change. And I always like, for me, it always works the opposite. I'm scared if it will not change. Yeah. And, I... <laughs> and then it's kind of, I think change is easier than not changing the, let's say you see yeah. if you're not happy anymore about it. And uh, I don't know, or yeah, something is. Um, um... I agree completely. I love change, mm -hmm. and and I and I need it. You know, I need change in order yes. to just to keep myself interested in life. And I don't understand people who who stay in jobs they hate and things like that. And I'm I'm just like, well, why don't you just leave and do something else? And they're like, oh, that's you know such a challenging idea. <laughs> Yes. Good, Karen. I feel we are on the same um, uh, page, so I don't accept your comment about the age. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, you're only, only as old as you feel. Here we go. Here it sounds better because I feel you think the same I am, and maybe someone who is also you know, a teenager and does the same. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is true. I'm probably not your typical. I like my I like my quartz flower. Mm -hmm. I might just I might just photograph that and send that to you. So I very rarely say oh, I like something. Good, good, good. Let's do it. Send me. We'll take a look, and then. Um... I will also already finish mine because kind of, uh, yeah, I'll comment on yours and then maybe I'll, oh my God, every, <laughs> Oh no, have you lifted the paper off? <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay. There is nothing that can be un <laughs> uncorrect. Uh, and, so yeah, um, 
like the final comment will, from my side would be again the same in the same word uniting uniting before finishing before saying my my artwork is done take a look the the, the big the complete uh, image see which areas are popping out and make it more uh, all together yeah, yeah. united united because this also like you could take time to do all these flowers da, 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 da. good but the detail is nice but then put them all together because it's the background and it should look you know um, yeah it should be the background exactly it should look all together so taking a look at yours aha uh -huh. so you're sending me this corner of the flower and um the elbow so the orangey perfect i would even don't touch it later yeah this this bright orange area with these upper pirates and um this looks very cool the all the colors in the mix um the flower um is again it feels nice is let's say um first layers but what i do i would for example take a thin brush and maybe add those darker outlines a bit in the in the so like let's say dark dark purple and uh just kind of yeah again you remember not not the um, not the outline all around but more these darker kind of spots so a little bit so one uh, i outline one part here a bit like a bit thicker stroke here's something so like you i like very much your flower but it looks um like too even a bit flat a bit like one layer so just a yeah. bit those accents yeah you yeah. see those this inside spot is an accent then something coming out and you will feel at once it will look more vivid it will yeah. be like already is um yeah but as the base very nice i like those strokes good job on all of them like so so many yeah so oh a bit i took a leaf out of darren's book and i i um pounced ah. <laughs> I like that we can learn from each other. You know, it's uh, this is also um, what gives this. Um, this. Yeah, and um, so yeah, if you finish, you continue. Feel free to send it over, and yeah, I can also like even comment. I can send you the voice message if you want a need or something. Yeah, um, and but cool. <laughs> yeah. thank, you. Yeah, thank you i really enjoy it i may or may not finish this one i'm not sure sometimes it's also good to let it go it's um like because what we do here is also practice let's say yeah we've practiced one story but finishing painting can be you know maybe you like other motives and stories so it's um I mean, I love the painting. I love the original. It's amazing. I imagine, like, like watching it live in museum, it should be like you just oh. stand in front of this huge wall and like, because it's measured. It's like two meters, yeah, yeah, more than two to one, and um... and the, the I I really felt the before we started it that kind of that you're looking up at this thing, even though, you know, I'm just looking at a small fish version on a screen. Mm -hmm. The way he's way he's painted it, he's looking up at it from beneath. Yes. And I just, yeah, I really felt that. And the, and the fact it's so dominant, I mean, it's such a massive image mm -hmm. in the middle of the, just kind of completely takes over the center of the page. Oh, and the fact that it's in the center. Exactly. Also, a good uh, good eye on that spotting. Yes. Well, that's the acting thing, isn't it? Because the body is formed by the shape around it mm. and the space around it, rather. Wow, I like it. Super. I love this comment. Awesome, Karen. Thank you. Thank you as well. 
Was, was, yeah. See you next week. Yes, next week should be on from my side. So um, the Darren's choice of uh, water lilies. Water lilies. Really appreciate. Cool, Karen. And All right, my dear. Time. Yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye. Mm -hmm.